In November 2025, during the Dubai Air Show, a remarkable moment quietly made history. The Russian Su-57 prototype known as No. 5, 109, or T-50-9, opened its internal weapons bay in flight, revealing a set of missiles tucked inside. This is the first time that such a clear and operational demonstration of the Su-57's internal bay has appeared on public video, a demonstration with implications for Russia's aerospace ambitions, military strategy and export goals. The footage released by Russia's United Aircraft Corporation shows the Su-57 performing a series of controlled, deliberate maneuvers while the forward internal bay doors open to expose two KH-58 USHK anti-radiation missiles. Simultaneously, the wing root or side weapon bays are shown carrying two R-74M2 air-to-air missiles. On the ground and in the air, this represents more than just an exhibition. It is a calculated display of capability. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel The Su-57, often referred to in Western media as Felon, is Russia's fifth generation stealth fighter. What makes it particularly sophisticated is its use of internal weapons bays, a design feature that helps maintain low observability by keeping crucial armaments inside the fuselage instead of mounted on external pylons. Internal bays are a hallmark of modern stealth aircraft and seeing them open, loaded with missiles, changes how analysts assess the jet's operational readiness. For years, the Su-57's internal bay architecture was understood in theory. Aviation experts, open source observers and analysts have studied Mark Cup's wind, tunnel models and occasional ground test images. But these rarely offered a full, realistic picture of how the Su-57 would carry combat, relevant weapons internally. Now, thanks to this in-flight footage, the internal carriage of live, or at least representative, ordnance is on public display. When No. 5, 109 climbed into the sky over Dubai, its doors opened with purpose. The forward bay revealed two KH-58 USHK missiles, designed specifically for anti-radiation missions to intercept or suppress enemy radar systems by homing in on electromagnetic emissions. At the same time, the side bays in the wing routes more compact compartments open to reveal two R-74M2 missiles, which are short-range infrared-guided air-to-air weapons. These side bays act as defensive systems, while the central bay demonstrates strike potential. This particular aircraft, T-50-9, is not a one-off showpiece. According to aviation experts, it is one of the most production, representative Su-57 prototypes, closely matching what a serial production model would look like. This suggests that what we saw in the video may not be limited to test beds, but could reflect real the operational capability. The decision by UAC to release this weapons. content just ahead of the do by Airshow indicates strategic timing. They are sending a clear message to potential customers, to competitors, and to the world about what the Su-57 can do from a geopolitical perspective. The display is about more than raw power. Russia is positioning the Su-57 for export, and the Dubai Air Show is one of the most powerful stages for that. Delegations from various air forces, military analysts, procurement officials, and aerospace companies attend this kind of event. By showing that the Su-57 can carry anti-radar weapons internally preserving its stealth signature, Russia is offering a narrative of sophistication and flexibility. It is saying, this is not just a dogfighting aircraft, it is capable of complex suppression missions with low detection risk. Moreover, its timing is notable. In recent years, Russia's aerospace sector has faced challenges from sanctions to supply chain constraints, but it has also doubled down on promoting cutting edge platforms. The Su-57 is a flagship not only for Russian air power, but for its arms diplomacies, demonstrating internal 
Bay carriage of missiles, especially anti-radiation ones, strengthens the Su-57's export pitch, particularly to countries that view stealth and seed suppression of enemy air defense's capability as critical. For potential buyers in the Middle East, Asia, and elsewhere, the attraction is clear. A stealth fighter that can penetrate radar networks without relying solely on external pylons. At the same time, opening the internal bays in flight carries risk. Exposing a weapons bay, even briefly, could degrade stealth signature. How often and how long such bays can be opened in contested airspace remains an open question. Demonstrations, after all, are tightly controlled. Airshow flight profiles are designed for safety and spectacle. They are not fully representative of combat conditions. There may be trade, offs that only emerge under threat, like how fast the doors can open or close under radar lock, or whether the aircraft can safely deploy missiles without exposing itself for too long. There is also a distinction between prototype and operational aircraft. While no, 5, 109 is advanced, it is still a demonstrator. The video does not definitively confirm that all serial Su-57s will carry exactly the same loadout, or that they will routinely open their bays fully loaded in combat. Some analysts note that the rear internal bay, a smaller tandem compartment remains closed in the footage, leaving open the question of how often all compartments would be used in a real mission. And there is uncertainty over whether the missiles shown are live warheads or inert training versions intended for demonstration, especially given the restrictions often in place for airshow flights. Nonetheless, publicly revealing internal weapons carriage with anti-radar missiles is a powerful signal. For defense planners, such a capability suggests that the Su-57 could be employed for deep, strike missions against enemy radar installations, making it a valuable tool for suppression strategies. If exported, it could reshape how prospective buyers think about air denial, stealth attack, and modern aerial conflict. On the industrial side, this demonstration also underlines progress in Russia's aerospace engineering. Successfully integrating advanced missiles into internal bays requires careful systems design, from weapons racks and ejector mechanisms to bay door actuation to flight envelope control. Showing the system publicly means UAC and its partners are confident in their engineering maturity. It supports a narrative that the Su-57 is not merely a prototype or a technological showpiece, but a viable contender for real missions and for export buyers who demand performance, not just promise. In the broader context of global air power, this moment should be read as part of a larger competition. Fifth generation aircraft, once the exclusive domain of the U, S, and a few others, are now part of a crowded field. China, Russia, and other players are all vying for relevance. By showing internal bay operation, Russia is declaring that its stealth design is not superficial or limited. It can carry critical payloads in stealthy form. That strengthens its position in the international arms market and reinforces that the Su-57 remains not just symbolically important, but strategically relevant. Yet, the demonstration is also a calculated piece of arms diplomacy. By showcasing this capability in Dubai, Russia is not only appealing to potential buyers, but also signaling to competitors. It is making a case. This aircraft is mature, capable, and ready for serious missions. It may influence how other air forces plan their future acquisitions, how they evaluate threats, and how they think about defense investments. For countries with layered air defense systems, a stealth aircraft carrying anti-radiation weapons internally could be particularly attractive. There are also more subtle implications for export risk and geopolitical alignment. Some potential buyers may hesitate because of political risk, cost, operation and maintenance complexity or sanctions. Operating a Su-57 fleet demands sophisticated infrastructure, trained pilots and logistical support. 
but the very fact that Russia is demonstrating such advanced capabilities shows that it is betting on export customers who are willing to make that investment. At the same time, rival powers will watch closely how many Su-57s will actually be sold, where and under what conditions. Will Russia commit to transfer of maintenance and support or retain tight control? Will export variants have full internal bay capability or will limitations be imposed? For military analysts, it will be important to track what happens next. Will any air forces publicly order Su-57s with internal weapons bay compatibility for anti-radar missions? Will Russia operate Su-57s in suppression roles in real conflicts? How will the Su-57 evolve in future variants in terms of engine performance, stealth reduction, sensor integration, or payload types? Will future demonstrations show different weapons inside the bays, for instance, longer-range missiles, bombs, or electronic warfare pods offering a broader mission set than what we saw in Dubai? Another factor to watch is how other nations respond. Western powers, for example, already operate stealth aircraft and may feel compelled to emphasize their own capabilities or accelerate developments in next-generation systems. Alternatively, rival exporters may revise their offers. Other aircraft makers might highlight their own internal carriage, lighter detection signatures, or advanced avionics as they compete for customers who now have a clearer idea of what a stealth multirole platform can achieve. Internally, within Russia, such a demonstration may also serve a domestic narrative. It helps bolster national pride in military technology, supports the case for continued investment in high-end aviation, and might strengthen internal and external perceptions of the Su-57 program's viability. For UAC and Rostec, it is a way to showcase long-term progress, not just in flight testing, but in weapons integration and operational thinking. The choice of the KH-58 USHK missile is also telling. Anti-radiation missiles are central to seed missions, their presence in the Su-57's bay suggests that Russia envisions the aircraft performing as more than a simple fighter. It could be used to suppress enemy radars before a broader strike or to neutralize advanced air defense networks in contested environments that aligns with modern doctrine where stealth aircraft penetrate defenses, eliminate radar threats and pave the way for other assets. At the same time, the presence of R-74M2 short-range air-to-air missiles in the side bays reinforces a layered self-defense concept. The Su-57 is not just for offense. It can protect itself in close engagements, and its internal storage helps preserve stealth. Combining strike and defensive capabilities internally is a complex design achievement, and publicly showing it adds significant weight to USC claims about the jet's operational flexibility. What remains unclear, however, is how frequently or realistically such an internal loadout would be used in actual operations. Would Soviet era or modern Russian pilots routinely fly with internal anti-radar missiles? Would they open bay doors in a real conflict when radar threat is active, and how reliable is the bay door mechanism under sustained combat conditions? Those are questions that only time and potentially future deployments will answer. There are also questions about export versions. The Su-57 variants offered to foreign buyers might be different. Lower performance engines, reduced stealth coatings, or limited weapons integration are all possibilities. Whether export models include the full suite of internal bay capabilities and compatibility with anti-radiation missiles like the KH-58 USHK is yet to be proven. Potential buyers will also need to consider training, maintenance and life cycle costs. Owning a stealth aircraft is only part of the challenge. Operating and sustaining it is another. From a strategic point of view, the public demonstration at Do by also serves as a deterrent message. Rivals may interpret this as a signal that Russia's advanced fighters are not just for show. There may be second, daughter effects, 
other nations may accelerate development of their own stealth platforms or upgrade their radar networks. If the Su-57 becomes more widely exported, it could shift regional balances in countries that acquire it, particularly those that face aerial threats or rely on advanced air defense systems. On a technological level, the successful operation of internal bays in flight indicates progress in systems integration, mechanical reliability, and weapons carriage. Russian engineers have had to solve complex problems, how to open and close doors without compromising stealth, how to eject missiles safely, and how to maintain aerodynamic stability throughout. Demonstrating this in front of a global audience is a validation of that engineering work. At the same time, as observers, we must remain cautious. Public demonstrations are inherently selective. The sequences shown are likely carefully planned, rehearsed, and optimized for visibility and safety. The aircraft likely flew a flight profile designed to highlight its capability, not to test performance under maximum threat. The real test of its combat performance remains in classified deployments, not airshow videos. This moment also underscores how military technology and public diplomacy intersect. Russia is not just showing off a hyper, performance fighter, it is shaping a narrative. By revealing internal bay capability, it is selling a vision of a stealth aircraft that goes beyond dogfighting, that can penetrate radar defenses, and that offers export customers something more than legacy platforms. It is a piece of strategic communications aimed at governments, defense officials, and industry decision makers. Looking ahead, the next milestones will be important. Whether the Su-57 will be used in active seed roles, whether any export customers sign deals, and how the platform evolves will determine how significant this moment really is. If the Su-57 proves capable in operational deployment, its internal bay demonstration could be seen as a turning point in modern Russian aerospace. If not, it may remain a clever demonstration impressive, but limited. In sum, the opening of the Su-57 No. 5. 109's internal weapons bay during the Do by Airshow 2025 is a sophisticated, meaningful signal. It reflects technical maturity, strategic ambition, and export intent. It shows that Russia sees the Su-57 not just as a symbol, but as a functional, capable system that can carry serious munitions under stealth. It may reshape how nations think about advanced air power, especially when combined with anti-radar roles and suppression capabilities. This demonstration is neither trivial nor symbolic alone. It is potentially foundational for Russia's aerospace future and for how advanced air defense suppression might evolve. Whether this leads to more exports, deeper deployments, or enhanced variants, only time will tell. If you found this analysis useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more war updates and global analysis.